Hello, my name is Joe Balant, and I've been doing technical support at Isograph for 17 years. Now today I'm going to share with you the question that I have been asked the most in those 17 years, the technical support problem that people are most likely to come to me with. Uh, it was probably one of the very first questions I ever answered when I was first hired, and I'm still answering it to this day. So if you have this question, don't feel bad. A lot of other people have uh, asked the same thing. Anyway, the question is, I've, I've constructed my fault tree, I run the analysis, and I look at the results. And when I look at my cut sets for my top gate, I'm not seeing the full minimal cut sets showing the basic events. All I see is generally one or two cut sets, which are gates, not events, and there's an asterisk next to the gate name. So rather than showing the cut sets for my top gate, down to the basic events, I'm seeing just the next level input gate with an asterisk next to it. Why am I seeing this, and how do I view, how do I view the complete minimal cut sets for my fault tree? Okay, now I don't blame you for not knowing the answer to this one. It is a little bit of a hidden option to turn on the full minimal cut set. So I'm going to walk you through that to, so that you know, going forward, how to get the full minimal cut sets for a fault tree. Firstly, a note on why the program is doing this. This is called modularization. Modularization is a technique in which the fault tree is broken into small independent chunks. Now what this does is it um, simplifies the fault tree calculation. It uh, makes it so that the program doesn't have to calculate any more than one small chunk at any given time. And the way that the cut set calculations in particular blow up in complexity exponentially with regard to the number of cut sets um, makes it take a long time so it's much faster to solve the fault tree in small independent chunks and then combine them together than it is to try and have uh, go at the whole thing all minimal cut sets all at once. So, so modularization is performed to simplify the calculations, to speed them up, and also improve their accuracy. The downside to that is we don't get to view the complete minimal cut sets, it's just the modularization. There is, however, an option to expand those modularized cut sets. So after the calculations are completed, it always does the calculations on modularized sets to, again, for accuracy and speed. But after those calculations are complete, we can tell the program to expand the cut sets so we can view the individual basic events and how they contribute. So let's take a look at how to um, um, turn on that option. So to expand the modularized sets, I'll go to the project options dialog. Again, you can get there from the tools, options, project menu option by clicking on the project options toolbar button, or by also double clicking on the root node of the project tree control on the left hand side. Now, whichever method I use, what I want to do is go to the sets generation, right, cut sets generation. I want to choose the sets generation tab. And then on the approximation methods, I will want to choose the custom radio button, and then the custom options button. This will open up the custom options dialog. And on the left hand side under the fault tree, custom sets generation options. I have a checkbox for expand modularized sets. So you can see why it's, it's kind of a little hidden and tucked away. And if you don't know it's there, it's really easy to miss. So um, and there's no worries if you are not able to find it. It doesn't mean uh, you're no dumber than I am because I didn't know where this was when I first started either. So anyway, I check that option, select OK and OK again. And now I'll need to rerun the analysis. And the second time you run it, it might take a little bit longer because now it has to do that cut set expansion, which can add an extra calculation step. This fault tree is small enough. It doesn't really add much to the already minuscule computation time. But if you're working with a sizable fault tree, it'll add a little bit of extra calculation on the end. OK, now when I go and click on my result summary, I'm still seeing that uh, modularized cut sets. But you'll notice this expand sets box down here is now available before it was grayed out and I couldn't check it. When I check this, now I'll get to see the, the complete minimal cut sets for my fault tree. So now this is important in a couple of ways. Not only does it affect the cut sets, it also affects the importance analysis. Even though the expand sets option is not displayed in the importance analysis um, um, screen, it's applied based on the current cut set expansion. So if I come back here and uncheck expand sets, my importance is based off of the modularized cut sets. If I come here and say expand sets, then the importance is based off the expanded cut sets. 
Um, finally, on the summary tab, you'll notice it will do, give me the comparison between the compact sets and the expanded cut sets. So I have two compact sets and 23 expanded cut sets. This isn't really relevant aside from, um, the difference between them isn't really relevant aside from if you want to know the amount of calculation time saved by modularizing. Okay, and then once we've expanded our cut sets, we can do all the, the cool things that uh, cuts, that we can do with the complete and minimal cut sets, print them out, um, trace the cut sets, etc. all those things that we like to do. Okay. Now, you might still have gone through all these steps and still be seeing gate names within the, um, uh, gate names with an asterisk next to them within the, uh, um, the result summary dialog. There's one other setting that can also influence this. Now, generally speaking, cut set modular modularization is a globally set option. However, it can be individually set at specific basic events. If you double click on a basic event, there is a modularization drop down, and the default setting is automatic, and it should be like this for most of your gates. Uh, perhaps maybe accidentally you set it to forced on for one of your gates, or maybe you're trying to accomplish something else and you set the modularization forced on. If I do that for a specific gate, then even if I've expanded the modularized sets, I'm telling the program to always forcibly modularize that uh, gate. And then again, when I look at the top gates cut sets, again, we'll see that one specific gate um, and it's that one specific gate has a modularized gate with an asterisk next to it. Regardless of the expand modularized sets option in the project options, the local gate setting will override that global option. Now, there's another case where that modularization gets forced on as well. Even if we do set it to automatic, we might find the program turning it on for us, and that's in the case of priority and gates. When you set a gate type to priority, the program, and it doesn't show it immediately, the program will automatically modularize that gate. And so when I go back to it, you'll see that modularization has been forced on. And even if I try to turn that off, if I set it back to automatic or set it back to forced off, the program doesn't really listen to me. It turns it back to forced on. There's a reason for that having to do with calculations is to prevent the sequenced inputs to that gate from intermixing or mingling with unsequenced events elsewhere in the tree in, in cut sets. Because the way sequencing calculations are applied, they're applied at the cut set level. So we want to make sure that sequenced events never end up in the same cut set with unsequenced events. And so the program will always modularize priority AND gates and their inputs, as is important to remember when I when this is a priority AND gate, the gate inputs to this gate also get their modularization forced on. And again, that's so the program can include these gates in the sequencing calculation of the priority AND gate. So it's done for calculation reasons to give an accurate uh, result. Now, sometimes you do still want to see the, uh, the minimal cut sets down to the basic events, even when you have a priority AND gate. So we, sometimes we do want to see those cut sets expanded. So what I recommend, if that's the case, if you still want to see it, is you're going to want to do two analyses. The first one you're going to want to do for purely for the correct answer, for the, the quantitative analysis to get the correct results. And that's what the gates modularis modularization forced on. And again, that's often necessary to make sure the priority and gives the correct results. Once we've um, done that one and got our correct answers, we might do an, a separate analysis to view those minimal cut sets. It's basically as if sequencing was turned off. One thing you can do is just set it to an AND gate, and now you're going to get a different answer, but the cut sets will be what you want. Another possibility that you can do is if I go to the Project Options on the Sets Generation tab, I can uncheck Auto Sequence Priority AND. When I do that, that stops forcing that modularization issue. So I can set both the priority AND gate and its input gates back to automatic. And you'll see it'll take this time around. And now when I rerun the analysis, keep in mind my, my result here is not necessarily going to be accurate because it's not really doing the sequencing calculations. However, I will be able to view those minimal cut sets, um, those delicious minimal cut sets with no... Um, uh, with no modularized gates. So again, that doesn't come up too often. That's only in fault trees with priority AND gates, which remember is generally a small percentage. Generally, we're not using that that much.
Okay. I hope this has been informative. I hope this helps you figure out um, you know, why, how, how to view the complete null cut sets for your fault tree. If you have any additional questions, please contact Isograph. You can find our contact information on our website, isograph.com. Just click on the support link up at the very top. Anyway, thanks and have a great day.